it's like a hundred years from now, humans may be immortal. Imagine being married to the same person forever, forever. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Arthur Clarke, of course, said that, but wouldn't it be cool if we could actually have a sneak peek, an early warning, an advanced look into what some of that magic is all about? Well, our friends at Science Channel are doing exactly that, or at least they're gonna try. And they're gonna try in the person of one James Woods. You've seen him before. James, why'd you wanna take on this gig of prophesizing the future? I mean, isn't prediction a tough business? Well, the irony is I didn't take it on. I actually went to the Science Channel and said, you know, I took this little detour in my life for like 45 years doing my day job. But now what I'd really like to do is go back to where I feel most comfortable, being really, quite frankly, a geek, uh, because I started, as you know, at MIT, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. And uh, I've just become sort of more and more fascinated. This sort of sleeping giant has awakened inside me. I really want to get back to thinking about science, because I've just been so moved by how fast technology now really is developing and how it's impacting on our lives. And they said, well, you know, we've been thinking about a show like that, and really within a matter of an hour, we came up with the idea of doing it. We had a wonderful production company sort of pull uh, the ideas together. We had, we'd sit around and brainstorm, like, well, how about a show about, you know, robots who can vote? Or how about, you know, what about space travel? Is it possible, et cetera, et cetera. So the irony is I was at Comic-Con, you know, once with John Carpenter's Vampires. I was here once for Contact. I was here, you know, talking about vampires and space travel. And the next thing I know, I'm doing a Science Channel show where we think, well, is that possible that those things could ever exist or have existed or do exist. And um, honestly, it, it didn't take much to put a big hook around my neck and pull me into the fold. I, I actually gotcha. went there hoping to do it. So mm -hmm. so what does the future, future scape? You know, here, here's the one thing I've learned for sure, and I'm not dodging your answer because it sounds like I'm being political. Every time you think you're going on one track, something completely out of nowhere knocks you out of the box. You know, so you, you know, I, 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 it was funny today, I was doing an interview and I, out of nowhere, I said, you know, I once wanted to write this apocalyptic story. And the story basically was about what happens when we lose all our technology. And I said, I kept thinking, well, what's the villain of the piece? What's the nightmare of the piece? And it was built in. Once you lose the technology, I mean, Game do you over. know how to skin a deer? <laughs> you know, I mean, very quickly, our society would erode without any technology at all. So what is the future of technology? Uh, you know, at a time when we're having more social troubles, there probably isn't as much energy being put into technology as it could be. When I was your age, and I always hate to use those kinds of expressions, but when I was in my 20s, man was walking on the moon. You know, now we're having trouble getting websites to work. So, you know, it's a little, <laughs> sorry, but we're a little bit, you know, we're a little bit behind the eight ball, I think, on our technology. For me personally, what I would like to see, because I've experience this with um, people as I've, as I've evolved as a person, as I've grown older, uh, I would like to see ways of diagnosing in medicine that make it impossible not to know what this biomechanical mass is doing or in what way it's malfunctioning. We may not know how to cure disease, but if we can diagnose it as scientists or science buffs, we know that we can absolutely, most assuredly, find a way to fix it or cure it. We may not find eternal life because, you know, good old entropy makes that impossible probably, but there are a lot of things that we could do to make sure that, you know, technology will be our friend. Now, the other part of Futurescape, the show that I'm doing for Science Channel that I really profoundly like, is that not only do we deal with the science issues, we deal with the ethical issues. Everybody says, oh, well, that's gonna put me to sleep. Quite the opposite. You know, when you think about, my grandmother was born in 1885, okay? And this is a true story. When she was 15 years old, right on the cusp of the magical 20th century, with all its innovation that was gonna change the world, and also wars that caused more deaths than any in the history of humankind. Sure. She was asked by a teacher to get up and give a speech about what the wondrous future of the world would be like. And she said, I see a day when man will fly in horseless carriages through the sky. And the teacher said, that is very insincere. You're being a smart aleck. Yeah. And made her sit in a corner uh -huh. with a dunce cap on. That's a true story, mm -hmm. okay? So this wonderful geek that I greatly revere, my grandmother, mm -hmm. actually, if I could have any great gift and I could take somebody back just for the fun of it, I'd like to walk her in front of that smug hater <laughs> of science and intelligence who made her sit in the corner 
and just show that picture of Kitty Hawk with Orville Wright and Wilbur Wright flying through the air in a horseless carriage. Sure. So when you ask what the future is, I hope it's somebody that pisses off the dumb people. Because <laughs> we smart people have taken a lot of hit in life, you know, for a lot of different reasons. And you and I know, because we're geeks, we know what it's like, you know, to be abused because we're not the prettiest and so on. You wouldn't have that problem. You're a geek and you're gorgeous, so hey, Amazing, you got it knocked. But the two of us, yeah. we got to fight, although you're pretty good looking too. So I'm the only guy who really suffers for being a geek, finally. <laughs> well, but, I have a good Undertaker. That's what, that's what <laughs> Speaking of which, so yes. man, yeah. machine, yeah. are we going to take on this business of the singularity when it all comes together? Interesting you would say that. One of our episodes in, uh, in uh, Futurescape is called I, it's called, I'm sorry, Citizen Robot. Funny, I said this because I had Isaac Asimov on my mind. And it opens with people storming a polling place, outrage, violence, and so on, because a citizen robot is about to vote. So, of course, I'm right in the middle of the melee, and I turn to the camera, and I say, well, look at this catastrophe, a robot voting. How could that possibly be? But if we turn the clock back a mere 150, 60 years, we would say, well, why would they let a black person vote? If we turned it back 50, 60 years, I don't know exact dates, and I should, uh, why would we let a woman vote? And now we look at our modern life, how could we not have allowed that to happen? But why would we have let a citizen robot vote? Well... Now we start working back from the slippery slope. What happens when we look at Uncle John with his pacemaker? You know, I've got a couple of stents in here. Maybe you have a filling. Maybe you have uh, a pin that holds a hammer toe together or whatever. You know, there are all sorts of technologies that make us slightly bionic. Now you're at two ends of the bell curve. There's humanity, and here's a robot. At what point will we ever find a God gene, and I'm a religious person, but I know that science has not found a God gene yet. And we address that in the show. By the same token, is this robot, if properly programmed, not also able to think about the ethics and the morals of his or her choice? Uh, you know, certainly better than Hitler would have. So now you have all these interesting questions that are no longer just, oh, the dry ethics of science. These are provocative questions about the future of humankind and how we will engineer a better future or a future which will absolutely destroy us. So is that the format of the episodes? You take a sort of science fiction scenario and work backwards from there? Absolutely. You know, what if? What if we said, okay, we really want to go to Mars. How is that possible? But let's even make it more exciting. We want to go to another solar system or we want to read people's minds. Now, what do we do on our show that's a little different? We actually show it happening. You say, well, that's not possible. Yes, actually it is. If you look at the efference that happens when people think of, if I look at an object, there is a nanosecond where actually a certain part of my brain forms the word, now that I've learned what the words are, uh, to do with that object that I'm looking at. With enough technology, and we're gonna show it in our show, uh, in, our, in our series, you can actually look at the sort of digital imprint of what that moment is when you form that word a moment before you register it or say it, okay? If you could then take that imprint and retranslate it, what you've basically done is a sort of English to French, French to English uh, dictionary, but we've done it with the science of that experience of seeing an object, forming some kind of digital imprint in our own brain, being able to read that electrical impulse, which you can do, you couldn't carry it around, it's too, too much technology right now, but sooner or later when it's miniaturized, you will be able to, and the next thing you know, we're reading people's minds. Mm -hmm. Now the big question is, do you really want to go on a date and look across the table at the person who maybe cheated on his or her wife or husband or mate or whatever, uh, who really isn't very honorable, who really is actually a serial killer, God forbid, or is so sweet, maybe they're not gonna be fun enough? <laughs> oh, look, now I know who I wanted. <laughs> James, we could talk long, long into the future. Sure. Uh, please come back, and we will. I would love to. Thanks for having me on. The show is called Thank Futurescape. You. It's Thanks, from James. our friends at the Science Channel. I'll be watching. You should, too.